Who would you pick as Manchester United's next full-time manager? That's the decision that Ineos now have to make. They have moved on from Eric Ten Hag. He was sacked after the West Ham game. And I don't think too many of us are surprised given how this season has gone. I think they're going to take their time in choosing a new manager. I don't expect this to be a decision that's made in the next month or probably even two months. Who would you choose? I'm going to run through 11 names. It's going to be a bit of a top-level video, just briefly speaking about each of the names linked with us. I'll be doing deeper content, uh, deep dives, mini documentaries, looking into them. So please do subscribe to United People's TV. I'll give you that. Let's start with one name. You can see him there. And Ruvai Nestoroy's name has to be on the list. He's our current interim manager. So, of course, he's a potential to be our next full-time manager. Now, my personal opinion is that I, I don't think that Ineos would do that. But I suppose it depends on what happens in the next... If he nails the next seven months, then maybe. Maybe. But a little bit stung by what happened with Solskjaer. And I don't particularly think the United will actually look internally. I think they'll go externally. Now, let's run through those candidates. And Julian Nagelsmann, for a lot of people, is the top candidate. Current coach of the German national team, former Bayern Munich coach, and then Leipzig before them. Bayern, he left there, I think he was, what, one point off top when he was sacked. It was a bit weird. They were still in the Champions League. It was an odd sacking, really. He's somebody with 37. He's got a proactive style of play, a very shrewd tactical mind. And for a lot of people, Nagelsmann would be top of their lists. Now, a name that may well not be too far behind for some people is Ruben Amarim. Link with the Liverpool job last summer. The Sporting Lisbon coach has a system where he plays three at the back and he's had a lot of success with that out in the Portuguese league. Could he do it in the Premier League? Well, it's just the questions you'd ask about any manager who manages in the foreign league. And that's not what this video is about. But Ruben Amarim is a name on a lot of people's lists. As is Sebastian Hönes. Now, Sebastian Hönes last season did an incredible job with Stuttgart. Got them to second in the Champions League last week. Beat Thiago Motta. I think that was in, in Juventus as well. Stuttgart's more struggling this year. Eighth in the Bundesliga. But again, another one of those young, up-and-coming managers with a proactive style and is a name that is going to be on quite a few lists. Simone Inzaghi. The job that he has done at Inter Milan has been fantastic. Second currently behind Antonio's Conte, Antonio Conte's Napoli. But again, Inter used that system of three at the back to great effect. And as far as a tactician goes, very clear system, knows what he's doing and has had a lot of success, but probably has a very, well, not probably, has a very good setup at Inter. Stable environment. I'm not sure whether he'd leave. I believe Ruben Amarim has a clause in his contract that he can be released in the summer. I'm not sure if Inzaghi has that. Now, a man who is free right now, sitting there, get the label in, Zavi. Uh, my personal opinion is that I don't really think that Xavi should be considered. I think if there were problems with Eric Ten Hag, I think those similar sorts of problems would exist with Xavi. Uh, but Xavi's name, reports have suggested that United have contacted him over the last few months. Was he contacted in the build-up to the FA Cup final? Uh, I know lots of managers were. And Thomas Frank was one of them. Pochettino was another one. Of course, he's now manager of the US men's national team. But Thomas Frank is another name on the list. Somebody who has shown with Brentford what he can do. And when it's right, it's fantastic. A very proactive, aggressive, high-pressing system. Premier League experience. Does have tactical flexibility. Good man manager. I don't think Thomas Frank is anywhere near the bottom of the list of these 11 managers, if I'm being totally honest. But Thomas Frank's name is on the list, as well as Xavi. And now we move on to lots of different ones. Edin Terzic. <sighs> I don't really think this is a conversation that needs to go too far, if I'm being completely honest. I think there are much better candidates than him on that list. All right, I don't really particularly think he's got a very good reputation out in Germany for what he did with Dortmund either. But Terzic's name is being linked. Now, there's lots of different names on this list. As I said, these aren't all guaranteed to go any further than just this video. But Kieran McKenna was somebody who United spoke to before the FA Cup final. He's decided to stay at Ipswich and pushed away from any interest from United and also Brighton. Very much struggling with Ipswich. And it's what happens when these managers come up and they try to play their system. They played in the Championship and do it in the Premier League and they haven't got the players who are capable of doing it. And it's the exact same thing as happening with Kieran McKenna. Kind of feel like he probably should have moved on from Ipswich, but a bit of loyalty, he stayed there. But Kieran McKenna, his name will come up again, as will Michael Carrick's. And it has already. Of the two, 
Which would you choose out of those two, McKenna or Carrick? Anyway, move on. Graham Potter. I hope this is a conversation that doesn't really go much further than this. Yeah. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being harsh on Graham Potter, and I think anybody would have told him that moving to Chelsea was a bad idea. Well, any good friends, but he decided to. Again, there's, I think there's probably worse candidates than Graham Potter on this list, but it's not somebody who I want in the club. And Gareth Southgate isn't a candidate, won't be considered a candidate, and this should be the end of it. So don't speak about Gareth Southgate. So there's 10 names on this list so far, and no doubt there will be more. And there's a complete variety of managers. And <sighs> this is a time where United don't just do a big U-turn from Ten Hag and say, well, everything we were doing before is wrong. S ripped it up, s get rid. The squad that we have built now was built towards ultimately playing a proactive possession-based style of football that has the ability to have a high press when organised properly. And all these characteristics are kind of shared between a lot of these managers. Nagelsmann would fit inside that. Ruben Amarim, how would that work with three at the back? The same goes for Simone Izaghi. I'd have some question marks. Honus, I don't know enough about Honus' system. Xavi, I don't think it would work as much. Thomas Frank, I genuinely could see Thomas Frank working at Manchester United to a certain degree. Could he manage that step up? I don't quite know. But he wouldn't be the worst name on that list. Out of all of them, who are you choosing? Or who do you think, at this moment in time, would be the best candidate? Now, as I said, I don't personally think this is a conversation that's going to be going forward particularly fast. I think Ineos will have Ruben Nistelrooy as interim manager at the very least until January, until after the December crazy fixture pile up. And they will spend a couple of months really looking at all of these different candidates, Nagelsmann, Amarim, Hunnis, Inzaghi, Xavi, Frank, Terzic, probably not, McKenna, Carrick, Potter, Southgate. And there's more that you can throw onto that list as well. That's not an exhaustive list. It's just what I have seen so far. I'm already seeing reports that United are in talks with Nagelsmann, that United are already in talks with Amarim. And you know what's going to happen over the next couple of months now. There's just going to be story, 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 absolutely everywhere. But of that list, let me, know, let me know in the comments which one you would choose. And over the next few months here on United People's TV, as I said, I will cover not every single one of these candidates, but I will look into different managers and their styles and how that could be applied to Manchester United because this is when Ineos choose their man for their game plan because it didn't work with Eric Ten Hag. So this is a big appointment. This project 2028. It now needs a new man in charge. Who would you choose?